This video talks about lateral medullary syndrome. Now before we go on and talk about the lateral medulla, it's very important to get associated with the structures that are in the caudal medulla. What does caudal mean? Caudal meal means tail, the tail end of the medulla. So when we're talking about lateral medullary syndrome, we're talking about structures that are affected laterally in the caudal medulla. So before we talk about the syndrome, let's talk about all the structures that are in the lateral medulla. First of all, this blue regions right here is the pyramid. The pyramids contain corticospinal tract, followed by these green regions here, which is the medial lemniscus, followed by the hypoglossal nucleus, the most medial structure. Now, if you look at my, or if you listen to my medial medullary syndrome video, you will see that hypoglossal nerve is part of the medial medullary syndrome. What cranial nerve is hypoglossal nucleus? It's cranial nerve 12. So hypoglossal nucleus is not part of the lateral medulla. Everything else from here onwards, from this line onwards, leaving the hypoglossal out is going to be our lateral medulla. Now what are the structures affected in the lateral medulla? First of all, this nucleus right here is the dorsal nucleus. Dorsal nucleus carries cranial nerve 10, followed by solitarius, which carries cranial nerve 7, 9, and 10. Now here is the spinothalamic tract, which is responsible for pain and temperature. Here is the nucleus ambiguous, and nucleus ambiguous is responsible for cranial nerves 9, 10 and 11. Now these are these these are the structures that are being affected on the lateral medullary syndrome. Now if I asked you which artery is responsible or block of which artery is responsible for causing lateral medullary syndrome, what would be your answer? And the answer is PICA or posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Just commit to memory for this one. There is nothing to really understand other than the fact that PICA is the artery that affects the lateral medullary syndrome. What about the medial medullary syndrome? It's the anterior spinal artery. Is anterior spinal syndrome and medial medullary syndrome is the same thing? No, it's not. Because anterior spinal syndrome can mean a lesion in the spinal cord or in the medulla, where medial medullary syndrome only deals with medulla. This is just a quick review of what I have been doing before this video. Okay, so let's talk about the lateral medullary syndrome and some of the structures associated with it. Now, when I was studying for my USMLE, I found remembering every single structure of the lateral medulla was hard for me. It was too much information. I was just, my, my thought process was getting clouded by so many nucleus and so many things I was looking for. So I kind of came up with a way of making my information funnel into a more uh, specific way. And the, the way that I did was the most important thing to determine when we are talking about brain lesions is to understand that in the medulla, the cranial nerves that are going to be affected is going to be 9, 10, 11, and 12. If none of these cranial nerves are affected, chances are medulla is not affected. If they're talking about 3 and 4, they're talking about midbrain. If they're talking about 5, 6, 7, and 8, they're talking about pons. But if they're talking about 9, 10, 11, and 12, they're talking about medulla. So once I determine that this is a medullary syndrome, then I have to determine whether it's medial medulla or lateral medulla. Now we already talked about that in the medial medulla, um, the cranial nerve that's going to be there is going to be hypoglossal or cranial nerve 12. Everything else, which leaves 9, 10, and 11, is going to be part of medial, sorry, lateral medullary syndrome. So once you decide that, it becomes quite simple to, to identify what is 
a lateral medullary syndrome. You can just do it in terms of cranial nerves. But the questions don't really stop there. The question can ask um, how the patient is going to look on physical exam. What are you going to see? What structures are going to be affected? So I made a list of the three most important structures that is affected in lateral medullary syndrome. One of them is spinothalamic tract. Okay, spinothalamic tract, which carries pain and temperature, it will cross onto the other side, on the contralateral side, for the effect to be seen. So, if the brain lesion is on the right side, the effect that you are going to see is going to be on the right side. And the reason for that is because spinothalamic tract uh, moves up. From the spinal cord onto the brain and while it does so it transects and makes a second order neuron sorry it just crosses from one side to the other it doesn't have a second order neuron it crosses onto the other side and then moves up it doesn't move up ipsilaterally it moves contralaterally what do I mean by that so this is what I mean imagine that this is a spinal cord and our spinothalamic tract is entering the spinal cord like this. It will cross and then move up. So that's why for our spinothalamic tract, it's going to be ipsilateral rather than con sorry, contralateral rather than ipsilateral. The next tract that is going to be affected is going to be the sympathetic tract. The sympathetic tract does not uh, move on to the other side. The effect is going to be ipsilateral, and spinal trigeminal tract is also going to be ipsilateral. So like I said, the spinothalamic tract is going to be ipsilateral, which is right here. I forgot to draw the spinothalamic tract, which is also going to be around here somewhere. So these structures are going to be ipsilateral. So the only contralateral structure on the lateral medullary syndrome is going to be the spinothalamic tract. So now let's talk about how will this how will this patient present to you in a general scale. So this patient is going to have affected spinothalamic tract. So they're not going to feel pain and temperature on the contralateral side. So they're not going to feel any pain there. But is their dorsal column intact? Of course it is because dorsal column is in the in the in the medial medulla. So they're going to feel pressure, proprioception, vibration, but they're not going to feel pain and temperature. But when we're talking about the sympathetic tract, the sympathetic tract or the effect of the ipsilateral sympathetic tract is going to cause Horner syndrome. What is Horner syndrome? Horner syndrome is nothing but an absence of the sympathetic nervous system to a certain extent. What I mean by that is if you have ipsilateral loss of sympathetic tract, you're going to have ptosis. What is ptosis? Ptosis is drooping of the, of the eyes, meiosis or constriction of the pupil, hemi and hydrosis. So you're, you're going to have hemi means half. Half side is not going to have any sweating. There's going to be uh, vasodilation, uh, in ophthalmos. So all these, uh, all these, I can go on and on about different sympathetic nervous system effects or the, or the loss of sympathetic nervous system, system effects. And, um, and they're all going to fall under the Horner syndrome. And the Horner syndrome happens because the sympathetic tract, the ipsilateral sympathetic tract is going to be affected. Last of all, the last tract that I will commit to memory, along with spinothalamic tract, contralateral, sympathetic tract, ipsilateral, is the spinal trigeminal tract and nucleus. If spinal trigeminal tract and nucleus is affected, you're going to have loss of pain and temperature sensation from the face, ipsilaterally. So you're going to you're going to be looking at a patient who is going to have ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature of the face 
ipsilateral loss, sorry, contralateral loss of the pain and temperature of the body, who also has intact proprioception and vibration in the entire body, and who has the sympathetic tract uh, lesion problems, uh, ptosis and hydrosis, um, vasodilation, all the effects of Horner syndrome. So that's what you're looking at in lateral medullary syndrome. Now you can ask me, why have I not talked about the cranial nerves? Now the cranial nerves are, which of the cranial nerves are affected in lateral medulla? It's going to be 9, 10, and 11, and not 12, because 12 is part of the medial medullary syndrome. And the reason I didn't really talk about it is because it's quite simple. We know what cranial nerve 9 does. We know what cranial nerve 10 does. We know what cranial nerve 11 does. You know, you're going to have dysphagia. Gag reflex is going to be gone. Palate paralysis, all those effects are going to come into play, which you're going to use to rule out medial medulla or if it's in the pons or if the lesion is in the brain stem. So to, to make sure it's, it's um, lateral medulla, you have to know that the spinal trigeminal is going to be affected, the sympathetic tract is going to be affected, and the spinal thalamic tract is going to be affected. These are one of the most common ones affected in lateral medulla, along with some of the cranial nerve deficits. So that's all I have to talk about in terms of lateral medullary syndrome.